Don't have a 516s, but I got the suppliers. Guess that's why they call me Mr. Good Pliers. So here we have it. This is the 1988 Chevy S10 Blazer Sport. This one was at the junkyard while I happened to be working there. Actually came in while I was working at the junkyard pulling parts. This is one that kind of fell into my lap. You see the Sport, there's not just a whole lot that distinguishes it. It does have the body color painted bumpers. And those match the silver paint sport stripes down on the lower body and rocker panels. It is a two wheel drive. Got the 2.8 V6 automatic. Being an 88, it is fuel injected. Sold it at Joseph Chevrolet. Kind of neat to see a local vehicle get to stay local. I actually got it uh, further west out of western Kansas. And that's helped it stay pretty rust free. There's just one little spot down in the quarter panel on the passenger side that would be pretty easy patch and other than that this old body really straight rest free blazer just the way guys like to find them see coming around the front here another piece of that sport package is it's got the black painted grill and black painted headlight bezels come around in the interior here <laughs> she is pretty rough inside Crank window, which I like. This one actually has 167,000 miles, so that's pretty average. And that's kind of one of the trade offs in any vehicle. Get something that's as close to rust free as this one is, and you're going to have some sun damage somewhere in the interior. There's just trade offs. If it was perfect, it'd be a $5,000 vehicle, but it's not. So a little bit of time and effort and repair from somebody, it can be pretty nice again. And even though the interior in this one is pretty rough, I'll show you in a minute if you keep watching here why that didn't bother me. See the windshield's still even good. It's kind of got some sun-baked patina starting on the roof doesn't really match the rest of the body so being a sport this one in my opinion you'd be better off repainting it just making it nice under the hood here we've got the 2.8 v6 fuel injected like I said this truck's only been sitting for two years so it actually should still have fresh fuel fresh brakes not like fresh, fresh fuel, but at least not spoiled to the point where it kills the pump and ruins the inside of the tank. So I'm going to see what I got here. Guy that unloaded it, he had said something about the motor trans was why he parked it. He had hauled it into the scrapyard for his neighbor. Didn't really know a whole lot about it. So I'm going to be dropping a battery in her here and we're going to... See what she'll do. You know, a lot of people don't like the side post GM batteries. I actually think it was one of the best inventions and not just for ease of installation and all that, but just universal post configuration. You always know that that positive is in this corner, that negative is in this corner. You swap in and out so easy. Don't have to be guessing, oh, is this terminal arrangement gonna work? Are my cables long enough? Rah, 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 all of that. And other thing a lot of people don't think about is that your top post batteries, the way that those are sealed into the 
case, those top terminals, a lot of times, I don't know why, they just have a tendency to leak. Just one of the weaknesses of the design of a top post battery. So I'm a big side post fan. If you're not, let me know why down in the comments. All right, so here goes nothing, as they say. Got the 2.8 fuel injected V6. We're gonna see what she does. A lot of people don't like these. I happen to think they were a decent motor. Uh, the real reason they kind of got a bad name was just because the carburetors on the early ones were overcomplicated. And EFI motor should be pretty good as far as resolving those carburetor issues. I think there are a lot of these trucks of the carbureted versions, honestly, that were junked with good motors and bad carbs. And nothing. So first thing to try here, gonna say there's probably some corrosion in the inside of that. So we're gonna cut this, cut this open, get that bolt out. Yeah, she's corroded. Not really a reason to dislike the side post because down inside there, there is brass instead of lead, so you can polish that brass clean. After you get this rubber out of the way. Looks like this is copper plated brass factory cable. That should looking bare and bright on that side and on this side. Just a little touch up. The bolt. Back together we go. I like that better. All right, one more try. Yep, she cranks. Leave that key on, let that fuel pump charge. Gauge is slowly rising. Third of a tank, maybe. Ooh, she cranks slow. Wonder if there's some resistance in that engine or something. Crank no fire. Easy way to check that is to splash a little gas in the throttle body, see if it hits off. That tells you you've got good ignition. That eliminates your fuel system. You get that gas going right into the intake. And again, with the fuel splashed in. Nothing. Wobbly steering column has the ignition buzzer staying on even without a key. A lot of times those steering wheels wobbly like that. You can take that column apart and it's pretty easy to tighten them up and get them good again. A lot of people replace the column just because they're scared to dig in, but you don't have to. So the way she was cranking... Uh, I'm not an expert, but almost makes me think there could have been jump time. It just doesn't seem to really, really turn over like the way it ought to. But there's guys of you in here that probably know more about that than I do. For what you heard, at least through the, <laughs> through the video. So 
could be could be an ignition issue but they said said it wasn't running so but the mileage probably not a bad idea to either start over do something different whatever whatever the next buyer decides my mind there's three reasons vehicle won't run got your spark got your fuel and then any internal mechanical issues so for this one no we got fuel I smelled fuel in there so I believe the pumps working splashed a little in there just to be sure and didn't fire off on that so for a guy to go further, next thing I would check on this would be spark. That's real easy to do. Pull a spark plug wire off, get you a helper in there to turn the motor over, and you can either plug that spark plug wire into a spare spark plug that you keep in your toolbox or on your workbench, or they do sell a spark checker with a little alligator clip on one end that you clip to the ground. And, uh, tip on the other end that you plug your plug wire into, turn that over a couple of revolutions, and if it's nice and dark down in there like this one is, you can see that spark clicking in there or not. And if you got good spark, if you got good fuel, which feels easy to do because you splash it in and you know it's running down in the intake, you can kind of about know from there that you've got a mechanical issue either compression bad valves timing chain if it's jumped or broke you'd have also bad compression because timing chain is what activates the cam to activate the valves so those are the things you'd look for and as far as the diagnosis goes that's where i'm going to stop with this one and i'll show you every Every tip of an iceberg, there's always more of an iceberg under it, and that's the next thing I'm going to run in the yard and show you here real quick. So this is part two of the story. This is my 1989 Chevy Blazer. This was one family owned, bought it brand new, and it was passed down and unfortunately had been stolen around the Kansas City area so the people that stole it the story I got was they sawed the catalytic converter off and driving around in it actually living out of it which having that exhaust chopped real incognito for <laughs> part of your crime spree and unfortunately, it was driven off the road during that time of the theft and run into tree post something, got the front end kind of wadded up, actually did bend the front frame horn around the steering box there. This is one that I bought for parts, basically bought it just for the 4.3 V6 which if somebody did want this and the other one and wanted that 4.3 and the automatic with it, I'd let them go as a package. And this is kind of the part of the video where I talk about why I won't be keeping these. And that is just that, you know, two-wheel drive blazer, a lot of guys out there working on these, modifying them. Not the way I do it. You know, I like my stuff stocked down to the hubcaps. And I just never really have been into these vehicles. I like them. I appreciate them. It's kind of neat to read about the history of them. I have a lot of vehicles already. I'm passionate about Chrysler's Plymouth's really like the Chrysler C bodies if you look at the rest of my videos you'll be able to appreciate that and 
I just have other vehicles on the list that I want to do something with. And for what these Blazers are, you know, they're starting to come on in value. It's kind of like a G-body. They're 40 years old now. Really hard, hard to believe that. Hard for me to wrap my head around that because these are the vehicles that we grew up in. I'm 35 now. So you guys know it. You see it. They're swapping 350s in them, swapping LS motors in them, lowering them. Again, not my, not my way. I like my stuff stocked down to the hubcaps, and so that's hard for me to let go of this one, knowing that something that stayed clean and original its whole life may be modified, but that's part of the deal. You know, the alternative is they either get crushed as would have happened to the one that I bought out of the junkyard. If not for getting crushed, they'd probably sit around and either get parted out or just be, be junked without a second thought. And in the last 40 years, that's the way a lot of them have gone. But this is one of those. Would like to sell it. Would like to give it a new home. Somebody... Especially if you have uh, your own YouTube channel and you want to show the progress, show show what you do with it, that'd be something we can kind of compare notes and and see where you take it. So get a hold of me if you think this is something you'd like. If you want the 4.3 in the automatic, I'd let them go. If you would rather put something else in of your own drivetrain then i've got a home for the 4.3 just let me know get with me see ya before the tahoe name went on a tahoe it was on the s10 blazer